Hey, I'm Dr. B, and I'm out here on Lake of the Woods in the month of March. This is a great time of year to get out ice fishing. Many fish species become much more active in March after the long, dark, and cold days of winter. For almost six months of the year, fish find themselves living in a pretty cold environment. So let's start with water temperature under the ice. But to do this, we first need to back up several months to the autumn, just before the lake freezes up. In the period just prior to freeze up, the lake has lost most of its heat to the atmosphere. Air temperatures during the daytime cool off, causing the lake to lose heat from the surface. However, it's at night when the air temperatures really dip that the lake loses the majority of its heat. In late fall, lakes generally mix completely, causing oxygen-rich cold water from the surface to mix into the bottom water. If you measured water temperature and dissolved oxygen in the fall with a meter such as this, you'd find that water temperature would be pretty uniform from the surface right to the bottom of the lake, probably around four degrees Celsius throughout. Similarly, the amount of dissolved oxygen, or DO, would also be constant throughout the entire water column, probably close to saturation, which is the maximum amount of oxygen that the water can hold at that particular water temperature. So that's the situation during fall turnover, as we call it. Constant water temperature and constant DO throughout the entire water column. However, once the ice goes on a lake, things really change. For one thing, the lake is essentially sealed off from the atmosphere for the next six months or so. So the amount of DO present in the water at freeze up must be sufficient to support all of the aquatic life, including fish, over the entire winter period until the ice comes off in the spring again. The ice sheet on the top of the lake causes the water temperature right under the ice to drop close to the freezing mark. Let's measure the water temperature just under the ice, 0.1 degrees Celsius. Take a look at the DO level. There's approximately 12 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. That's more than enough oxygen for even sensitive species like trout that are sensitive to low dissolved oxygen. The display on the meter also has DO as a percent saturation. In this instance, it's actually very close to 100% saturation, meaning that that's the maximum amount of oxygen that the water can hold for that particular temperature. Colder water is able to hold more DO than warmer water. So in the winter and early spring and fall, the colder water can hold a lot more dissolved oxygen. In the summer, however, and especially during prolonged periods of very hot and calm weather, lakes can actually lose oxygen back to the atmosphere when the water becomes too warm. So let's drop the probe deeper into the lake and see what happens with the temperature and dissolved oxygen. Over the winter, dissolved oxygen levels can decrease and in some cases become critically low and cause fish kills. This phenomenon is called winter kill. It's not a common occurrence, but it does occur occasionally and occurs mainly in shallow, productive lakes which have a thick organic sediment. Bacteria that are present in that sediment breaks down organic matter and in doing so uses up the oxygen. If the bacterial activity is significant enough, these critters can deplete oxygen to critical levels for fish, causing winter kill. As an aside, some anglers have asked me about fishing near ice ridges and, this, and if the success that they experience in catching fish in these areas is because water at these ice ridges contain more DO. I suspect that there is not much, if any, diffusion of oxygen at ice ridges from the atmosphere into the water. Even small open areas of water around these edges would only allow a minimal amount of oxygen to get into the lake below. It's more likely that the ice ridges are creating areas of better light penetration. The higher light levels are likely attracting small bait fish and in turn, the larger predatory fish such as walleye. So let's recap. Under the ice, water temperature is colder near the underside of the ice where the water is chilled by the ice sheet and hovers around the freezing mark. The water is slightly warmer at depth, essentially being the same temperature as it was in the late fall. Now there's an interesting side story here about why colder water right under the ice floats on top of the warmer water below it. 
Isn't colder water more dense than warmer water? If so, why doesn't the super chilled water under the ice actually sink? It has to do with the relationship between water temperature and density of water, but we'll save that story for another video. So back to our recap and dissolved oxygen. Adequate dissolved oxygen levels in a lake going into the winter time is critical for fish as the ice sheet effectively seals off any possibility of diffusion of oxygen from the atmosphere into the lake water. The amount of dissolved oxygen in the lake during freeze up has to last until spring. Sometimes DO levels, especially near the sediments, can be depleted by bacteria. If this depletion is significant enough, dissolved oxygen may drop below those required for fish. This isn't very common though. Our depth profile of dissolved oxygen here at Lake of the Woods indicates that this area of the lake is in fine shape. No risk of winter kill here. In a future video, we'll talk about water temperature and dissolved oxygen during the open water period, from spring breakup through to summer and fall. I'm Dr. B, and this is Below the Surface.